Hi everyone, welcome to this training session. Today what we're gonna cover is an executive level whiteboard. Now it just so happens today that I'm in front of a, a light board, but the goal here is to, uh, to kind of constantly stay engaged. Um, remember that usually when you have this conversation, you're likely going to be in a room where you have a chance to ask questions of the people so you know specifically what the priorities for this business are because I tend to be in a lot of uh, enterprise conversations today, so certain things that may be patterns for me may not be patterns for you. The high level takeaway is that there's a certain set points that you have to get through. From a CXO perspective, risk, cost, and performance, this is ubiquitous. This should be across every segment, every vertical, uh, enterprise, commercial. Um, and on the OVH side, the idea of innovation, connecting these services, connecting to the cloud, uh, and then protecting these also. This should be ubiquitous really with OVH and you need to take the conversation where it's gonna provide maximum value for the people in the room. This isn't a repeat verbatim the way that Paul did this, but if you chose to repeat this verbatim, you would hit all the points and it should echo across a, a fairly wide audience. So remember, you may say things slightly different than the way I do, you may put things in a slightly different order than I do, and that's fine. You need to effectively read the room, read the audience, and just make sure that you hit on the major key points. So, with that said, the context for today's recording is I am talking to a group of executives. They are not really providing a, a dialogue back and forth. Maybe the point where I'm asking them some general questions, they're raising their hand, but this is me talking to a, a room of, of CXOs and in general relating the common uh, business scenarios that we see kind of happening in, and, and that's really the context. So effectively now I'm gonna go into, um, uh, into roll and then we're actually gonna give this light board and we'll close it down. Hi everyone, my name is Paul Stevenson. I'm the field evangelist for OVH. In today's light board session, we are going to be talking about the recurring themes that we hear from a business priority perspective. We're gonna relate those downstream to the, uh, to the IT department and specifically the infrastructure that those IT departments are running across. Then we're gonna talk about OVH and the OVH value proposition and how and why we believe what we're building align to those business objectives. So with that being said, the three most common themes that we hear from a CXO perspective, from a priority perspective, tends to be performance. And remember, this is performance of the business, right? And then performance is entangled with risk and costs. No business wants their company to end up on the front page talking about another security breach. And on the idea of costs, no business wants to waste money. So it's not so much that they're trying to drive all these costs out. Ideally, they would like to spend less for the same amount of thing year over year. But if they didn't save any money, if they could just move money that was keeping the lights on certain parts of their business into other parts that actually help grow the business, usually companies would be extremely excited to do that. Notice that this is a triangle. This is a triangle here today because these tug on each other. If you end up in a situation where you're saying, hey, costs are too high, many times you can reduce performance, possibly increase risk, and get down to the cost profile. It really depends on which one of these drivers is driving the decision-making process. Let's just say, predominantly today, risk seems to win. So everything I talk about with OVH, we're going to make sure that we relate them back to the, the, the business priorities today. So with that said, let's take just a minute and do a quick introduction of OVH. OVH is a global hyperscale cloud provider that offers business industry-leading performance and value. Vertically integrated, we own our own network. And I mean, we own the fiber. We own the switching and routing equipment. We have tremendous amount of control over our network. 
Next, we own our server technology, meaning we get bare sheet metal, we have a laser cutter, um, we have strategic relationships with Intel, NVIDIA, Supermicro, and the list goes on. We get the raw components that it takes to build our servers. We actually do some special things when we build our servers that allow us to operate at a lower power in our data centers as well. We do water cooling of all of our um, uh, x86 CPUs and GPUs. And last, we own our data centers and the technology in those data centers, meaning our data centers are extremely green because by doing the water cooling of our servers, we were able to get rid of air conditioning, a central air conditioning in the building. And this allows us to be number one, more green, and then tremendously more cost effective than almost anybody else in the world. By owning each piece in that global solution, it allows us to offer our customers the best performance, value, security, and customer service in the industry. So the three themes that you're gonna hear from me consistently is going to be innovation. So at OVH, we innovate. We then take those innovations and we connect them globally, right? And lastly, we need to protect. Okay, so inside your data center today, and most of the businesses we're talking with have at least one data center. This is usually a production data center, and then most businesses also have a disaster recovery data center. If you're a larger organization, many times you you end up growing your data center footprint due to things like M&A. And along this idea that we want to put costs in the right place, if you have, have acquired another data center due to M&A, the goal is to, as rapidly as possible, get rid of that data center, collapse them into your environment, and realize the savings from the economies of scale that you have. So now let's talk about what you have in your data center. You have a mixture of physical gear that physical gear is actually helping power your private cloud or virtualized environment. This is typically almost ubiquitous, but not, not completely with, with, with VMware. And you have a number of applications, right? Running in your vSphere environment, and then potentially even applications down here running in your physical environment. Now, so what happened with businesses? So a couple of different things. One, today we're seeing a new set of competitors come to market. And these competitors are more agile. They're able to do things much faster. When you're in an older enterprise, usually it takes a significantly longer period of time to launch that next new innovative feature. So how did those companies do this? How were they more agile? Well, most of these companies were actually using public cloud. Now, this could be things like infrastructure as a service. This could be software as a service. Or this could be platform as a service. Right? But, okay, so is the cloud the solution to all problems? Hey, public cloud exists, we're done. Everything else is just going to be easy. No, absolutely not. And this is one of the common misconceptions that people have is that all clouds are created equal. And the reality is public cloud, the way that it initially came to market was absolutely in no way the same operated with the same attributes that you did inside your data center. Many executives that we've worked with over the last few years didn't fully understand that and would go full in on a, on a public cloud strategy to solve all of their problems. But when they went down and talked to IT and said, great, move all my workloads to the public cloud, they said, um, yeah, you remember those VMware applications that we had? Um, I can't just move those to the public cloud. They're not running VMware in the public cloud. So this first idea of getting some easy wins with our, our current infrastructure on-prem just, just didn't pan out. So 
you're going, well, I still need to get to public cloud. I still need to work on these next generation kind of applications. What makes sense? Well, here's what we think makes sense. Number one, if you look at these types of things, usually companies are spending 80% of their resources on just keeping the lights on. So they only have, you know, 20% of their money to do some of these innovative things in the, in the public cloud. Well, remember, costs. It's not so much that we want to reduce costs all the time. We would like to transfer some of this 80% over into this world and make this 30, 40%. Well, how am I going to do that if you told me public cloud doesn't allow me to, to move these workloads over? Well, this is where we're going to start to talk a little bit more about OVH. So at OVH, we do some very interesting things. We have three primary solutions, if you will. And those are, and we're going to say that this is OVH data center one. And then we're going to say that at the end of 2017, this is OVH data center 27. So you can see the gap now between, between one to 27. So first I'm running VMware on premise today. VMware is almost ubiquitous in the data center. Really what I would like to do is I'd like to take these workloads that are running on VMware, I'd like to move them to a cloud so that I can get out of potentially shift from CapEx to OpEx, maybe if that's one of my business objectives. But from a risk and performance perspective, if I can keep the same teams that were running my applications on premise, running those same applications in the, in the cloud, then my time to value is cut down drastically. It's almost as soon as I can start to consume these resources, as soon as I've connected the cloud to on-premise, I start to immediately realize value. And that's what we've done. So our first product is called, called Hosted Private Cloud. Now HPC, not High Performance Compute, Hosted Private Cloud. This is based on VMware. So now, if you think about this, Paul, can I move these workloads out to the cloud? And what we would say is, Absolutely you can, right? You can now take these, these workloads, we can go up here into our network layer and we can pass these things up and we can end up with the exact same virtual machines that were hosting your applications running on premise and we can move those to the cloud. There is some technology from VMware called HCX that actually enables this. So this right here is a tremendous cost saver. And if time is money, this actually helps you minimize costs. It also minimizes risk because the same tools that you were working with on premise, if I can use them in the cloud, the risk of my team not understanding how to operationalize this new cloud is drastically reduced. And from a, from a performance perspective, this is very much in line with risk. If my team doesn't have to learn something new, they should at least be able to operate the cloud as effectively as they operated on premise. And we would tend to argue more so because now you're no longer taking care of hard disks and dealing with all the problems associated with the data center. Okay, so this was that first challenge. I wanna be able to move what I have existing out to a cloud and we can handle that. Second, when we think about this disruptive industry that we're in from a technology perspective, there is this idea of agile development. We've probably heard of the term DevOps. Now this is typically what people think about when they think about public cloud, right? So our initial offering in this space is based on OpenStack. You get to leverage all of the OpenStack APIs from the general community. We have not spun up a special version of this. If your team is, is using OpenStack on-premise today and they want to immediately port what they're doing out to the cloud, they can absolutely do this. And you probably want to do this because managing OpenStack is extremely difficult. It only makes sense for the largest enterprise to manage and run their own instance of OpenStack if they're going down to the root level open source components to do so. Now, this really does help in that next generation cloud technology, but remember we have physical 
servers down here still running certain applications, like databases, for example. This is what we have called dedicated servers. And this is effectively bare metal, meaning there is nothing else installed on them. And this is different than when you read some of the other uh, three letter uh, cloud providers when you talk about dedicated server. And all it really means is it's an isolated server that's still running virtualization. This is absolutely nothing on a physical server where you have KVM over IP access, where you can come and install your own operating system with nothing to do with us at all. So, I now can take advantage of VMware, the same way I was on-premise. I can now start to satisfy uh, infrastructure for my, for my developers, and then I have these big, old, heavy systems um, that were running on bare metal. We can bridge that gap as well. So when I think about on the innovation side, this is the first piece of the innovation from us. The ability to have all of these services with one service provider. The next major advantage is, now that I have all these services and even potentially things running on premise, the ability to connect them. So OVH has a large global network and we allowed our customers to ride that backbone at no more cost than what's included in their subscription offering today. So no surprise bills. You need to access this network from an idea of cost containment. You can absolutely do that. Um, so connecting not only these services, but you'll notice how I drew this first line down here is the network. We have built our global network in such a way that you can connect every one of these services on the same layer two network if you chose to do so. So we're going to kind of draw this all the way through because I'm going to draw something else a little bit special here. We're going to connect those. So I mentioned at the end of this year, we'll have 27 data centers global. Um, at the end of this year, we will have 32 points of presence because the way you connect into the OVH backbone is you connect into one of our POPs and then you get the on-ramp to the entire global backbone. So if you need it, this is a big differentiator for, uh, for OVH and your business. Um, many people have very big physical boxes like a Unix or AX, AS400 on-premise today, and they have old legacy applications that may even have things like hard-coded IP addresses. So the ability of really getting rid of the data center, they always had some big anchor that kind of kept them in the, in the data center. So our strategy would be take that old big iron and put that in the pop. Now that you're in the pop, it's only a cross connect. And this is this technology here, right, this ability to connect into this pop and to get onto the backbone is something we call VRAC Connect. The ability to connect all of these services at layer two. So the idea that you have a virtual rack, no matter what the service is, they're effectively in the same rack. This is how the name came apart. This is simply just called VRAC. The ability to connect all services globally on the same layer two network, even all the way back to your physical VLANs on premise today. Now, this technology starts to enable use cases like data center extension. If you know that you're gonna have something on-prem and you're just trying to realize some of the, the economies of cloud, then data center extension is where you'll most likely be at. You'll live in this VRAC connected uh, world for quite some time, maybe forever. If maybe if through M&A or you're tired, you have very old data centers and you wanna get out of the data center completely, this now, the strategy with putting your old physical gear in uh, one of our points of presence, and then connecting into the cloud gives you the ability to completely move out of the data center. So the idea of data center migration or data center replacement. So now we've talked about some of the innovation. We've talked about how we uniquely connect these services inside of our cloud all the way back to on-premise. What's next? We need to make sure that we protect you ultimately. We've asked you, we've asked another 
set of uh, large enterprises, another set, and now everyone is inside of our network. And so we believe that it is a fundamental that we also protect you. So wrapping this entire service offering as my pen starts to run out of ink. We do some very interesting things here. We have a anti DDoS solution that will support up to a three terabit per second attack. So when we talk about this big network, the connection, the innovation, we were originally using an off the shelf solution, but it was actually not as performant as the solution that we created ourselves. So now we are going to put a lock. We are going to protect you from the outside, from those, from those adversaries, those large scale uh, distributed denial of services attack up to three terabit per second. How we're going to do that is some of our own innovative technology and leveraging the power of our today 12 terabit per second global network. Because we have our anti DDoS solution deployed at a few different data centers and we use BGP to automate sending your traffic to those data centers so that we can effectively filter it and never take you offline. Any of the cloud providers that say, as a part of us protecting you, we're going to take your systems offline, you might want to think about that for a second. Now, we're offering protection from a global perspective in the network. Additionally, at OVH, we're technology agnostic. We will take the best of breed technology from VMware, from example, Veeam for, for backups, Zerto for cloud to cloud disaster recovery. When you think about protecting the perimeter, the next thing you say is, well, that's great. You protected me at the edge. What are you doing for me in internal to the data center? And we are leveraging technology like VMware NSX. So the ability to use micro segmentation to protect the data center as well. So if we take a step back, and we look at our business objectives. We want to maximize the performance of the business. We want to minimize our risk. We want to maximize how we're distributing our costs. We believe that OVH is bringing a set of services to the market that help uniquely solve a couple big challenges that you have today. We help you move these old heavy systems from the data center out, maybe to a strategic position that allows you to connect to any cloud. Next, we allow you to operate the same way that you're doing it internal uh, today. And we do all of this with our anti DDoS and protection uh, capability. So we believe that you should take a look at OVH and see how we can specifically help solve your problems today. Thank you very much for taking the time. We hope to speak with you very soon.